my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. In today's Gospel, Jesus is approached by his disciples who want him to explain his parable of the darnel or weeds in the field. And so Jesus gives a lengthy explanation to them. And he points out that the sower of the good seed is Jesus himself. The field is the world. The good seed is the subjects of the kingdom. That's the kingdom of God. The darnel of the weeds, he calls the subjects of the evil one. That's the devil, of course. The enemy who sowed them, the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are all the angels. And then Jesus talks about what happens to those weeds, the darnel, that it is gathered up, he says, and burnt in the fire. And Jesus then explains that, well, at the end of time, that's what will happen. The angels will be sent, and they will gather those who provoke offences and all who do evil. And then in, in words that are quite hard really, Jesus says that they are thrown into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. That of course is hell. But on the other hand, the virtuous, they will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Listen, anyone who has ears, Jesus is explaining to us one of the hardest truths of our faith and that is the existence of hell, a place of everlasting sorrow, a burning furnace where there's this weeping and grinding of teeth showing remorse. And the question then immediately occurs to all of us, I'm sure, how could a person merit to go to such a place? And there's no easy answer to that. The thing is a mystery because sin and evil is a mystery. That is, it is a bit beyond our comprehension, really. But in, in the passage, Jesus does give us a hint at something of an answer to that question. Because in it, he says that those who are going to heaven at the end, for them, God is their father. He says, these, the virtuous, will shine, Jesus says, like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whereas those who are damned, who are going to hell, they are the subjects, the subjects of the evil one, the devil. The subjects, in other words, the, the devil's kingdom is their kingdom. The good, the good, those who are virtuous, are, they are, they're children of their father in heaven. Whereas those who provoke offences and do evil, somehow correspond to that. They somehow become like the devil. They are his natural subjects. Elsewhere in the Gospel, St. John gives us, um, sorry, not in the Gospel, it's in the, fir the first letter of St. John. He points out, again, quite strong words, something that's very similar, where he says, to sin to, sorry, to lead a sinful life is to belong to the devil. In this way, we distinguish the children of God from the children of the devil. Wow, wow, they are hard words as well. Children of God and children of the devil. And to, to lead a sinful life is to belong to the devil. So just like the virtuous person who does good continually to their through their, throughout their life, they become more and more a child of God and they become more and more like God. And therefore, on the other hand, the person who continually does more and more evil, they become, in a sense, more and more like the devil. And St. John actually uses that very striking, maybe shocking phrase, they become children of the devil. Those words kind of point out to us, I think, how we have to really fear sin. Sin is not just something we do, like a bad score or something that's clocked up somewhere. Rather, sin has the effect of changing us for the worse. 
much the worse. Whereas doing the good actions changes for much the better. It reminds me a little bit of that lovely book, Pinocchio. And remember, I'm sure you know the story of Pinocchio, this little puppet, spoiler alert, um, the little wooden puppet that really is destined to become like his maker, the carpenter, his father, really. But there's also a chance that he could become a slave of this evil kind of, um, well, kind of merchant who crosses paths with him, who, who wants to enslave him through, through trickery. And it's a real picture of the devil, God on the one hand and the devil on the other. And then this little puppet can choose to be, become one or the other, like his father, his good father, the carpenter, or like this slave driver, it was, an, it was an evil man. And Pinocchio, through really foolishness largely, he does a whole lot of stupid things. And then a certain dramatic point in the, the story of Pinocchio, he ends up uh, waking up in the morning, looking himself in the mirror, and he found that instead of his microscopic ears, as, as the author tells us, he has grown these huge ears, 10 inches long, of a donkey. And he's horrified as he looks in the mirror at the... Well, it's not a proper mirror. It's a basin of water that he looks into. And he sees these these long, long ears. And then he's, he's crying and shrieking and screaming about this. And then his friend, uh, who's also been as stupid as him and as kind of sinful in a way, he comes knocking the door. And when he comes in, it turns out that this fellow has started turning into a donkey. And initially, Pinocchio starts laughing. Uh, but as he's laughing, he starts stumbling around and he too starts turning into a donkey. As they run around the room, the two of their arms turn into legs, their faces lengthened into snouts, and their backs became covered with long grey hairs. And then, as they're crying and crying, the crying turns into the brain of a donkey, the two guys. Anyway, I'm not going to give anything more away. You have to read the book or watch the film. Uh, but the story is, is very, very clever in, in the sense we're representing the transformation. We can be changed into a child, child of God, or we can be changed into a beast, the donkey. And that is the terrible transformation that you and I are capable of, of undergoing, kind of changing into a little devil which is a terrible thing, or changing into a child of God. Both these transformations take place very gradually, not, not as quickly as Pinocchio's transformation into a donkey. In fact, they take place over time, normally over time. Um, today is also the feast of the very famous moralist and writer, St. Alphonsus Liguri, who died on this day in 1787. And as it so happens, there's no connection with the gospel directly, but as it so happens, he wrote a whole book about hell. And the the title of the book is, What Will Hell Be Like? Well, we hope not to find out. We could read the book, but that's as close as we should get. But he makes this very important point there. He says, if you don't, if you don't want to go to hell, what you have to do, what I have to do, is pray. Now read the passage out. He says, Whoever prays is certainly saved. He who does not is certainly damned. All the blessed have been saved by prayer. All the damned have been lost through not praying. If they had prayed, they would not have been lost. And this is and will be their greatest torment in hell, to think how easily they might have been saved just by asking God for his grace, but that now it is too late. Their time of prayer is gone. So we could ask St. Alfonso Liguri, help us, help us be very faithful to prayer even. Here are 10 minutes with Jesus, perhaps each day. We're praying. And in this prayer, always, no matter what else is happening, this is helping us to become more and more children of our Father God, more and more like God. So how important it is. So let us keep up this practice of daily prayer. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. 
I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. 